do you remember on the original Gran Turismo where, before a race, you could look at all the opponent cars driven by the AI that you'll be racing against? Have you ever noticed that you can't see the same information about the opposition in Gran Turismo 2? Well, that's because they're all cheats. Now, let's divide them into two separate categories of cheats. The first one we'll call rule breaking cheats. These are AI cars that have a higher brake horsepower than the event allows for, so while we players have to pick a car that comes in under the power restriction, the AI sometimes drives cars that exceed these limits. For example, here's one that I think we all probably know. Everyone's favourite, the Ford GT40 which appears on race 2 of the historical car cup at Rome. It has 305 brake horsepower, whereas the event's limit is set at 295 bhp. And then we have the hybrid cheats. This is where an AI car has more horsepower than the player can give the same car through the use of engine upgrades. An example of this is the Renault Clio 16V that appears in race 1 of the French Nationals. It has 143 brake horsepower, while we can only give the same car a maximum of 126 brake horsepower. In this video, we're going to take a look at all the cheating opponents on Gran Turismo 2. Let's start with the rule breaking cheat, specifically the ones that appear across all the versions of Gran Turismo 2. So if you want to have a crack at beating them yourselves, you can do so, no matter which version of GT2 you have. Firstly, we'll take a look at the Grand Touring Car Trophy, Race 1. The power limit for this race is 394 brake horsepower. There are two cheating opponents you can race against here, the first being the Toyota Supra RZ. It comes in at 12 brake horsepower over the power limit of 394 at 406. It's actually not too hard to beat at all. In fact, you'd probably not notice that it exceeds the horsepower limit if I never told you. The second cheating opponent you might face is the Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec R34. It has a power output of 396 bhp, which exceeds the limit of 394 bhp by just 2. Still, the R34 Skyline is likely to be one of the toughest opponents in the race, however the race really shouldn't cause you too much trouble either way. Now we move on to the second race in the Grand Touring Car Trophy, where we find no fewer than 4 potential cheating opponents. The first of these is the Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec R33, which has a power output of 498 bhp, which exceeds the limit of 493 by 5. As the race is generally filled with cheating opponents, you won't really see the R33 Skyline enjoying much of an advantage, at least not as much as certain other cars which we'll see later on. The second cheating opponent is the return of the Nissan Skyline V-Spec R34, which now puts out 509 horsepower. This is 16 more horsepower than the entry restrictions allow for, again making it one of the best opponents you can possibly face in this event. The third cheat you can come up against in this race is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. This car exceeds the brake horsepower limit of 493 by 8, meaning that it has an output of 501 brake horsepower. Again, we'll face tougher cheating opponents later on, and it's not particularly difficult to beat in this race. The last cheating opponent in this event is another returning car from the first race in the series, the Supra RZ. It now has a power output of 523 brake horsepower, meaning that it exceeds the brake horsepower limit for this race by 30. This sounds like a pretty noticeable advantage, but to be honest, the Supra doesn't really stand out as a formidable opponent here. I guess that being fast in a straight line isn't the only important thing. Now we move on to what is perhaps the most well-known cheating opponent, and its appearance is at the second race of the historical car championship held at Rome, with a power limit of 295 brake horsepower. That's right, it's the Ford GT40. It's well known in the Gran Turismo community, featuring in memes and videos, and now, well, in this video as well. It actually has only 10 horsepower more than the limit allows for of 295, coming in at 305 brake horsepower. However, the GT40 really knows how to use that power. It's a car that was made for racing and has the complete package. Power, handling and awesome looks of course. 
Something that also adds to the challenge here is the fact that the AI seem to be particularly good at getting around the roam circuit. Yeah, the AI is basically better at some tracks than others on this game, and roam is one of the ones that they're pretty good at. For these reasons, it can be a genuine challenge to beat the GT40 here, and when it appears in the race, it can usually be found stretching out a commanding lead at the front of the field. Suggested cars include the Lotus Europa, which I'm using here, as well as the Nissan Skyline GTR 71. Here we are, then. The GT40 also appears at the last race in the series, which is held at Grindelwald, and has a power limit of 394 bhp. The GT40 is now a legal opponent, but there's actually another car in this race that's a cheating opponent. A Chevrolet Corvette Stingray can appear as a potential opponent here, and it has 434 brake horsepower, which is 40 over the limit. However, as we've seen previously, it's not all about horsepower. In fact, the Corvette is a much less challenging opponent than the GT40 was on Rome. It's simply not as good of an all-round race car as the GT40 is, despite it having at least a 40 horsepower advantage over us, the players. Venturing on from the historic car cup, we come now to the MR challenge, specifically the third race of three races, which is held at Red Rock Valley. The power limit for this one is 591 bhp, but of course, since we're looking at this race, there must be a cheater among us, and it's the Vigat Vector W8 Twin Turbo, outputting 634 brake horsepower. It's a reasonably challenging opponent, as Red Rock Valley is a fast circuit, so it has lots of opportunities to really use all those horses of power. However, it's only let down by the fact that the AI really isn't too good at driving the car. It frequently ventures off track, particularly at this corner here. Despite this, it can frequently be found at the front of the field if it starts with a good grid position at least. If the vector starts at the back, you may find that it struggles to progress through all the traffic. Next, we come to one car in particular, one that is 384 brake horsepower over the event's limit. But before we discuss its appearance, we need to talk about why it appears. So, the car in question only appears on the North American version 1.0 release of the game, which is the original NTSC version that was released when Gran Turismo 2 first came out. If you want to check to see if you have this version, there are two very quick ways to easily tell which version of the game you have. Please note that this doesn't apply to any other region, just North America. On the original 1.0 release, there is a mistake on the car wash screen. A car wash costs 5 credits, but it mistakenly states that it costs 5000 credits. If you get your car washed, it'll still cost 5 credits, so it's just a mistake in the text really. Also, if you apply racing modifications to the Ford Taurus on the original version 1.0 release, it'll transform into the Roush Racing NASCAR from 1999, driven by Mark Martin. In subsequent releases, the car's racing modification was changed to a generic NASCAR livery, presumably for licensing reasons. Anyway, so the endurance races on the NTSC V1.0 release of Gran Turismo 2 also had some bugs. This explanation is taken from the cutting room floor, so thanks guys for publishing this information. In the original NTSC version 1.0 release of the game, all races in the endurance section, with the exception of Grand Valley 300km, contain an AI car taken from another endurance race that is out of place compared to the other opponent cars. The cause of this issue is that the game uses one global list of possible opponents, and each event simply contains a list of opponent numbers referencing the global list. Late in development, opponent number 1127, the Shelby GT500KR, was for some reason moved to the end of the list, and it became opponent number 1220, which, in my opinion, could have perhaps been due to its name change from the Japanese to the American version of the game. The NTSC 1.0 release did not compensate for this, and so due to the gap in the list, the endurance races pick the opponent above the intended car in the global list, so the first car on the opponent list for each event uses the last car from the previous event in the global list instead. So for example, here is the list of possible entrants for the Apricot Hill 200km endurance race. On the NTSC V1.0 release, a car from the Grand Valley 300km endurance race is accidentally added to this list. 
That car is the Roof BTR2 with 440 brake horsepower. Its appearance at the incorrect endurance race actually means that it's the fastest car to attend the Apricot Hill 200km endurance race. With the second fastest car now being the Toyota Supra RZ97 with 406 brake horsepower. On a side note, all the opponent cars actually fall way short of the power limit which is set at 591 bhp. But as we've seen before, the fastest cars on paper aren't always the fastest cars on track. Even though the BTR2 performs pretty well, it will still often be beaten by the Ford GT40 whenever the two cars are on track together. One reason for this may be the fact that the BTR2 is equipped with sports hard tyres, while the GT40 has sports mediums on. However, the GT40 is an all-round better car anyway. While we're at it, we might as well discuss the rest of these mismatched opponents. The car that mistakenly appears in the Seattle 100 miles endurance race is the TVR Griffith 500, which should appear at the Apricot Hill endurance event. This event's opponent should all be muscle cars, which means that the Griffith has around 100 brake horsepower less than most other vehicles in the race. However, it's more modern and is therefore better at using the power it has. When I simulated this event, it was bested only by the Camaro Z28 30th anniversary. Next up is the Laguna Seca 200 miles endurance race. The mismatched opponent here is the Dodge Viper GTS, which should have appeared at the previous race at Seattle. While it's one of the toughest opponents in its actual race, that Laguna Seca it pales in comparison to the JGTC cars it's up against, and it's not helped by the fact that the AI tends to get the first corner wrong quite often. The JGTC cars in the race are the same ones you find in the GT500 championship, proper race cars with around 700 brake horsepower. It took me around 7 laps to lap the Viper, but to be honest you could easily do it quicker. Ah oh well Viper, you are never meant to be in this race, it's going to be 90 laps of disappointment for you. Next up is the Millennium at Rome endurance race. The erroneous car here is the STP Tizan Viper GT, which was meant to appear at the previous race at Laguna Seca, alongside its fellow GT500 cars. And even though it's not supposed to be in this race, it actually competes reasonably well. After all, it has 645 brake horsepower, which is more than certain cars that appear here, such as the Jaguar XJT20 and Lister Storm race cars. When I came around to lap the field on lap 10, it was in 4th place, holding off a Nissan R390 GT197, a fully fledged Le Mans car. However, the Nissan did eventually get past not too long after I caught the pair of them. Now we come to the SS Route 5 All Night Endurance Race, where the mismatched opponent is a Citroen Xantia, which should have appeared at the Trial Mountain 30 laps endurance race, which I have intentionally left until last. The Xantia has a grand total of 195 brake horsepower, which means that it's woefully underpowered compared to the top tier race cars which you typically face as opponents. And these cars are the opponents that also show up in the likes of the Gran Turismo All-Stars event, such as both Toyota GT1s and both Nissan R390s, as well as the likes of the Ford GT and the Jaguar XJ220, all of which have between 540 and 680 horsepower, way more than the Xantia's 195 bhp. You should have no trouble lapping it multiple times during the race. We should also quickly mention the Grand Valley 300km endurance race, which should also have a mismatched AI car, but one that never actually appears in the race. You see, the car that's mistakenly set to appear is the Vauxhall Tigra, but as this glitch only exists on the NTSC 1.0 version of the game, you will never see it. This is because the NTSC version is hard-coded to never allow any Vauxhall cars to appear in any races, which supersedes the fact that the Tigra is mistakenly included in the list of possible opponents for this race. The Vauxhall cars only appeared on the PAL version of the game, whereas the NTSC versions get Opal cars instead. Lastly, we have the Trial Mountain 30 laps endurance race. The reason we've left this one to last is because it has the game's biggest rule-breaking cheat in the list of possible opponents. And this car is the Vector M12 LM Edition, which should appear at the Millennium in Rome endurance race. However, its appearance in this race means that it has 384 brake horsepower over the event's limit of 295. 
That means it's almost impossible to beat. That's right, almost. It is beatable. And our car of choice is going to be the Dodge Concept Car. At the start of the race, depending on where the M12 starts, it will likely get caught up in traffic, but not for long. This may enable you to get in front of it over the first lap or so, but to be honest, we're not really interested in track position at this point. This race, much like Formula 1 sometimes, may all come down to the pit stops. Fast forward to lap 2 and we're now 4 seconds behind the M12 already. But it's okay, we just need to stay in touching distance at this point in the race and work on making the tyres last to about half distance. Skipping to the start of lap 6, we're now 5.5 seconds behind the M12 and it has traffic to deal with again and as we've seen before, it's not very good at negotiating the other AI cars. This allowed us to cut its lead down by a full second. Fast forwarding to lap 11 and the M12 is struggling its way through the traffic again and now the gap is down to 3.5 seconds. However, the M12 seems to be working its tyres harder than we are and it seems like they're wearing harder than ours. This may allow us to catch up even more. Just one lap later and we're in touching distance. We can see the M12 up the road there and we're just 3 seconds behind. I was actually surprised that it didn't pit this lap. And I wasn't prepared to go for the undercut as my tyres still felt okay and I was pretty determined to make it to half distance before I stopped. Because if I can make it to lap 15 with the tyres in decent shape then I can make it from lap 15 all the way to the end while the M12 may need to pit one more time. On lap 14 we are right behind it. Lap times are slipping though. I'm about a second down on my current best time of 124.3. And unsurprisingly, the M12 pitted at the end of the lap. To be honest, it had been struggling on that set for a few laps now and may struggle to make it to the end on its second set. All good signs for us. Lap 15 and we're going to dive into the pits. Tires feel okay but the car is starting to understeer more and more so it's a good time to stop for fresh rubber. As expected, the M12 is going to pass us while we're making our stop, but we know that we can probably catch it again before the end of the race. Lap 17, the M12 has stretched the lead back out to about 3.5 seconds, but it has lost a little getting through all that traffic again. Lap 20, the gap is still similar, and as I was getting more used to driving the car at this point, I was able to smash in a few good lap times, two 24 zeros in a row in fact. Actually, make that three 24 zeros in a row, and the gap is down to just three seconds, thanks also in part to the traffic that the M12 is struggling with once again. And when we get around to the timing line to begin lap 22, the M12 has finally got through all the traffic, but we are now again within striking distance for the second time in the race. And to be honest, I was determined to pass the M12 on track. I didn't want to do it in the pits, really. After the best lap of the race by some distance on tyres that are slightly past their best, we are actually in position to attempt to pass, but despite passing the M12, we will succumb to its superior straight line speed on the long back straight. Lap 24 and we've passed it again into the first corner this time. This is an earlier pass than we did on the previous lap, which means that we're quicker than the M12 overall. So much so that we almost kept the lead on the long back straight again. Even though we temporarily lost it, we gained it back into the braking zone for the hairpin. Lap 25 was the first time that we led for an entire lap. The Vector M12 LM Edition didn't even manage to pass us on the straight now. So it seems like it needs to make another pit stop, and soon, if it's going to have any chance of winning this race. Right now, it's just dropping off the pace due to its high tyre wear. Lap 26 and the M12 still hasn't pitted. Surely it's too late now to make a stop and have time to catch us up again. Not only that, but we're making our way through the traffic again. Something which a human is far better than the AI at doing. Lap 29 and the M12 has finally pitted, and it's definitely too late in the race for it to have any effect on the outcome now, surely. That being said, our tyres are going off quite fast now as we complete what I think is our slowest lap of the race so far. As we come around to the start finish straight to complete our 30th and final lap, the M12 is catching us, but not quickly enough. And as we cross the line, we've won the race and beaten a car which has 384 more brake horsepower than the event's limit. If you accomplish this feat too, give yourself a pat on the back. While we're talking about the mismatched AI, there's actually one more car to discuss which appears outside the endurance races. 
It's a Peugeot 306 equipped with dirt tyres, which can appear in the tuned NA number no. 1 Cup. The reason it appears in this event is theorised to be because the cut Mugen S2000 was intended to appear here, leaving a blank space in the entry list when it was cut, which the Peugeot 306 ended up filling. Speaking of the dirt events, Pikes Peak Downhill Race 3 states that you'll race against a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 4, but when the race loads up, you'll realise that you're actually racing a Lancer Evo 7. Race 2 of the Tahiti Dirt Route 3 Reverse event says that you'll race against the Impreza Rally Car 99, but when the race loads, you'll actually be facing an Impreza WRX STI version 396, which is much easier to beat. Now it's time to move on to the hybrid cheaters. Not every race contains a hybrid cheater, so we'll just go through the ones that do. Starting in alphabetical order, we begin with the 8T Sports Car Championship Race 2, where we find three potential cheating opponents. The first of these is the Starlet 3-door Turbo S82. While we, the players, can power this car up to a maximum of 174 bhp, the Starlet in this race has 242 brake horsepower, an increase of 68. Naturally, if you enter this race with the same car, the AI Starlet will kick your ass on the straights. Not just because of the horsepower advantage, but also because it seems to have non-standard gearing, resulting in a better top speed than the car has at stock anyway. The second cheating opponent in this race is another Starlet in fact. This time it's the Starlet Turbo S87, which has 242 brake horsepower in the hands of the AI. What's our max BHP for this car? 223, representing an increase of 19 horsepower. It's less of an advantage than the 82 Starlet has, but it's still more than enough to give it a big advantage in straight line speed. The last cheating opponent, in this race anyway, is the Nissan March 89, also known as the Micra in Europe. The AI Micra has 241 bhp, whereas we can only improve this car's horsepower to 214. So the AI have an advantage of 27 brake horsepower over us when using the same car. Again, the AI's advantage is very clear on track too, though only on the straights, as we humans are better drivers of course. Moving on to race 3 of the 80 Sports Car Championship, we find two opponents which will now be familiar to us. The first is the returning Starlet 87, but wait a minute, it has even more of an unfair advantage this time around. Its power output has been increased to 288 brake horsepower, now giving it 65 more horsepower than we can possibly give this car. That's almost as much as the Starlet 82's advantage in the second race in the series. Then we come back to the Nissan Micra 89, and like the Starlet, it too has more power here than in the second race in this three race event. It now has 289 bhp, while the player can only give the Micra 214 bhp, which is an increase of 75. That makes the Micra 89 the biggest hybrid cheat we've seen so far. But hold on, there are far worse cheaters to come later on. Next we have the Toyota Corolla Levin GT Apex 83, which can also appear in this race. It has 290 horsepower in the hands of the AI, whereas the player can only give this car a maximum of 260 horsepower, meaning that the AI has an advantage of 30 bhp over you. There is also the Toyota Sprinter Trueno in this race as well, and like the Corolla, it too has 290 bhp, representing an increase of 30 brake horsepower over us, the players. As with all the other hybrid cheats, this difference can only really be felt on the straights and not through the corners, as we humans are generally better at negotiating the track's twists and turns. Lastly, we have another Toyota, the MR2 1600G Limited Supercharger 86. In this race, it has 288 brake horsepower, whereas we can only give this car 283 bhp, making it one of the easiest hybrid cheats to beat. Yes, it only has an advantage of 5 brake horsepower over the player, meaning that you really don't notice too much of a difference in straight line speed between the AI and yourself. Now we move on to the Compact Car Cup, specifically Race 3 of this championship. The first car we're going to look at is another Nissan Micra, however this one is the more modern Micra 97. Well, it was modern when this game was released anyway. The version that the AI drives has 191 horsepower, while the maximum horsepower that we could give this car is 182, so the AI gets 9 more bhp than we do in the same car. 
The next hybrid cheat in this race is the Honda Logo, a car which is notable for having what's called continuously variable transmission, which is a shiftless or single speed transmission, the only car on the game like it. This one that the AI drives has 195 bhp, compared to our car's 191 bhp. A small advantage, but a hybrid cheat nonetheless. Another cheating AI car in this race is the Renault Clio 16V. In the hands of the AI, it has 193 horsepower. Whereas for the players, well, we can only give this car a maximum of 126 brake horsepower. A difference of 67 bhp. You see, the problem with this car for us is that you can't give it NA tuning or a turbo kit, meaning that it's always going to be crap for the player. Well, not for the AI, I guess. The last hybrid cheat in this race is the Volkswagen Lupo. In the hands of the AI, it has 192 brake horsepower. Whereas for the player, well, we can only power it up to a maximum of 175 bhp. That means that the AI has a 17 horsepower advantage over us, which isn't a lot, but still pretty noticeable when you're facing the same car in the race. Moving on to the convertible car World Cup, specifically race 2. Just one hybrid cheat to be found across all three of these events, and it's the Plymouth PT Spider. Our PT Spider has a maximum of 249 bhp, whereas the AI's version of the car has 261. An unfair increase of 12 brake horsepower on what is already a pretty underpowered car. Next we have the Laguna Seca 200 miles endurance race. There are two hybrid cheats here, and they're two of the more interesting ones. They are the Zexel Skyline GT97 and the Kure R33 GT97, two cars from the 1997 JGTC season. Usually, they both have 670 bhp in the hands of the player, and they also have 670 bhp in the GT500 Championship. But for some reason, in this race, the AI versions of these cars both have 702. The same power output as the R34 Skylines from the 1999 JGTC season, such as the Pennzoil Nismo. This gives the AI an advantage of 32 brake horsepower. Next we have a familiar combination, a cheating Ford GT40 at Rome. This time, it's the Ford GT40 race car at the Millennium in Rome endurance race. Usually, the car has 489 horsepower, but the version that the AI drives in this race has, are you ready for this? 589 bhp, an increase of 100 horsepower, making it the biggest hybrid cheat we've seen so far in this video. Coming back down to earth, we now head over to the FF challenge, specifically race 1. And it's the return of the Renault Clio 16V, which we first saw in the Compact Car Cup. Here, it has 174 brake horsepower, an advantage of 48 horsepower. Still, it's not as bad as the one we saw before, that one had an advantage of 67 horsepower. We may even have one more appearance of the Clio yet to come too. Skipping on to race 3 of the FF Challenge, there's just the one hybrid cheat found here too. It's the Toyota Celica SS299, which has 289 bhp in the hands of the AI. We can only upgrade this car's power output to 284 horsepower, so the AI has a small advantage of just 5 brake horsepower over us. Not a big difference, but still noticeable in the race. Moving on to the French Nationals, we have the Clio 16V's third and final appearance. This time, it only has 143 brake horsepower, so it's getting progressively worse through the course of this video, and only has an advantage of 17 bhp over us this time. Given that this car is generally quite underpowered though, it's a bit of an odd choice of an opponent for the game's creators to choose so often, in my opinion. Just pick something else instead of cheating to make it more competitive. Now we come to the Gran Turismo All-Stars, probably one of the best sets of races on the game in my opinion. Three cheats to be found here, the first of which is the Ford GT40 race car once again. Remember last time when it had 589 horsepower, 100 more than our GT40 race car? Well, this time it has 639, 150 horsepower more than our equivalent car, meaning that it just beat its own previous record of being the biggest hybrid cheat so far. The second hybrid cheat in this race is the Lotus Elise GT1. Our Elise has 613 bhp, while our AI opponent has 637, 24 bhp more than us. 
It's not the biggest difference we've seen so far in this video, but in a car that is already pretty good, it's still very noticeable, especially on the straights of course. Lastly, there's the Nissan R390 GT1 97. In this championship, it has 639 horsepower, whereas our version of the same car has 633. Only 6 bhp less than the AI car, but again, still enough to notice a difference in straight line speed. We move on to the Grand Touring Car Trophy now, specifically Race 3. Here we find just one hybrid cheat, the Ford Mustang SVT Cobra 99. The maximum power output that we can give this car is 464 horsepower, while the AI's car has 490, a 26 bhp advantage over the player in supposedly equal cars. Next we venture back to the historic car cup. We're not going back to Rome though, but back to race 3 which is held at Grindelwald. The first hybrid cheat you can potentially face as an opponent is the Toyota 2000 GT 67, which has 340 bhp when driven by the AI in this race. That's 15 more horsepower than we can possibly give to the same car. The second hybrid cheat we can race against here is the Datsun 240Z71. Our car has a maximum power output of 319 horsepower, whereas the AI has 354 bhp in the same car. That's an increase of 35 brake horsepower over us. Thankfully though, we're better around the corners, which offsets the advantage the AI has on the straights. Next on our hit list is the Luxury Sedan Cup Race 2. The hybrid cheat here is the Ford Taurus SHO. Our Taurus has 364 brake horsepower, whereas the one that the AI drives has 388, 24 more than us. It might be the one and only hybrid cheat in this race however, but that's not the last we'll see of the Ford Taurus in this championship. And it makes its return in the third and final race of the Luxury Sedan Cup. This time, it doesn't have 388 brake horsepower, it has 486, that's 98 more than last time, and 122 brake horsepower more than us. That's not quite as much as the Ford GT40 race car, but still a pretty big cheat nonetheless. You know, it's a shame that the Taurus only had 364 bhp, as it makes its NASCAR inspired racing modification pretty redundant. With 486 bhp, it could have been good. But there is one more hybrid cheat in this race. It's the BMW 740i, which in this race has 488 horsepower when driven by the AI. But as usual, the maximum horsepower that we can give this car is far less. 421 bhp to be exact, meaning that the AI has a 67 bhp advantage over us when we're racing in the same car. Next up is the MR challenge and features a couple of pretty big cheaters. Starting on race 2 at 3, we first encounter the Lotus Elise 190. In our hands, this car has a maximum of 263 bhp, but in the hands of the AI, it has 339 brake horsepower in this race. That works out at an increase of 76 horsepower, giving the AI a firm advantage over us when racing in apparently equal cars. The second and last cheat in this race is the Tommy Kyra ZZS, and let me tell you, this is not the last time we'll see this car in this video, that's for sure. We're just getting started. In this race, the AI ZZS has 340 bhp, 61 more than our Tommy Kyra has, coming in at 279 bhp. Most of the time, I'd be making a pretty big deal out of a 61 bhp unfair advantage, but oh no, it gets way worse a lot later. Moving on to race 3 of the MR challenge, we first encounter the Honda NSX Type S0, or Acura if you're playing the NTSC version, which has 456 brake horsepower in the AI's hands. This figure is just 3 bhp more than we can give the car. The player's NSX has a maximum power output of 453 brake horsepower. The second hybrid cheat in this race is the Lotus Motorsport Elise. The maximum BHP that we can give this car is 328, while the Lotus Elise that the AI drives in this race has 441, meaning that the AI has an advantage of 113 horsepower, another hybrid cheat with over 100 horsepower more than us in the same car. Now we come to a series of races which has the most hybrid cheats in it, and some of the biggest cheats as well. It's the Pure Sports Car Cup, and we start with race 1. 
First up is the Tom's Angel. Our Angel has a maximum horsepower limit of 248 bhp, but the AI's Angel has 292, an increase of 44 horsepower over the limit. In my opinion, the Tom's Angel is a cool little car, but pretty underpowered, so it would have been nice to drive this faster version to be honest. But we're not quite finished with this car in this video yet. The second G is a familiar face, the Lotus Elise 190. On race 2 of the MR Challenge, we faced an Elise that had 339 bhp. Here, the game is a little kinder to us. It has just 290 horsepower, which is a lot less, but still 23 more brake horsepower than the car should have. Lastly, we have that Tommy Kyra ZZS again. Like the Elise, it's not as big of a cheat as we've seen before, but it still has 292 brake horsepower, 13 more than the 279 bhp that we have to make do with. Even though it's less than before, you can still feel the difference on the straights when racing in your own Tommy Kyra ZZS. Moving on to race 2 of 3, we find 3 familiar opponents and 1 new one. This new hybrid cheat is the Lotus Europa. In our hands, the car has a maximum power output of 299 brake horsepower. However, in this race, if it appears as an opponent, it will have 341 bhp, an increase of 42 brake horsepower for the AI to use against you. The first of three familiar faces is the Tom's Angel. Before, it had a 44 horsepower advantage, but now its power has been increased from 292 bhp to 341, meaning that it now has an advantage of 93 brake horsepower. And I'd imagine that with 341 bhp, it's even more fun to drive. Ah, I guess we have to build our own hybrids to find out. Next we have the Lotus Elise 190 again. Funnily enough, the, the Elise actually has the same brake horsepower here as it does in race 2 of the MR challenge, 339 bhp. Again, that's an increase of 76 horsepower over our Elise, which has a maximum of 267 bhp when all its possible power upgrades are purchased. Lastly, it's that Tommy Kyra ZZS again, and like the Elise, it's the exact same ZZS that appears in race 2 of the MR challenge. As a reminder, it has a 61 horsepower advantage over us, 340 horsepower for the AI, just 279 bhp for us. And with that out of the way, it's time to discuss race 3 of the Pure Sports Car Cup. You might want to make sure you're sitting down for this. Well, let's first get the Honda NSX Type S0 off our list, as out of all the cheats in this race, this one has the smallest horsepower advantage compared to the player's equivalent car. The AI's NSX has 507 horsepower, whereas we have just 453. That's an increase of 54 bhp, which, and let's be honest, is still a fair bit. But it only gets worse. Next up is a hybrid cheat we haven't actually seen before, the Honda S2000. The highest possible brake horsepower we can give this car through tuning is 364 bhp. The AI's S2000 in this race has 487 horsepower. That's a huge increase of 123 bhp, which makes the S2000 a tough opponent if you enter it with your own Honda S2000. Now we come to the Lotus Motorsport Elise, which we've seen before in race 3 of the MR Challenge. In that race, it has 441 bhp, but in this race, that has been upped to 490. That's an advantage of 157 horsepower that the AI holds over us when racing in the same car, making it one of the biggest hybrid cheats in the entire game. Next is the return of the Tommy Kyra ZZS again, and it's actually the last time we'll see it in this video. But we've definitely saved the best version of this car for last, and that's because it's the biggest hybrid cheat in any event on Gran Turismo 2. As a reminder, the max bhp we can apply to this car is 279, and what does the AI version have here? 487 bhp, an unfair advantage of 208 horsepower over us, which is an unbelievable amount. Well, we might be through the worst of it guys, but we still have the three final events to cover. The first of these is the Super Touring Trophy, featuring no fewer than seven hybrid cheats. Let's take a quick look at them all. Firstly, we have the Nissan Primera 98, also known as the Infiniti G20 in North America. 
In the hands of the AI, it has 339 horsepower, whereas we have to make do with 328, which is 11 fewer horses of power. Not a huge difference, and to be honest, not too noticeable in this race. Next we have another car which is inspired by the British Touring Car Championship, the racing modified Peugeot 406 sedan. Our 406 that we are driving has 324 horsepower, whereas the AI's Peugeot has 359, 35 more horses. Third, we have another BTCC car, which is the Vauxhall Vectra on the PAL UK version of the game and the Opel Vectra everywhere else. Ours has a maximum of 321 bhp, while the AI's version has 342, representing an unfair advantage of 21 brake horsepower. Next we have the biggest cheat of this particular championship, it's the Honda Civic 93. Usually, it has a maximum power output of just 291 bhp, making it a car you're not likely to choose for this event. However, if you do, you may come across the same car as an opponent, except the one that the AI drives has 340 brake horsepower, an advantage of 49 bhp. On to car 5 out of 7. And like the Civic before it, it's another returning car from the original Gran Turismo. It's the Toyota Corona Exiv 96, which normally has a maximum of 302 brake horsepower, but in the hands of the AI in this race, it has 342. 40 horsepower more than us in the equivalent car. Next is the second Primera you can potentially face in the Super Touring Car Trophy, the older 1990 Nissan Primera. Ours has just 292 brake horsepower, only one more than the Civic 93. However, the AI's Primera has 335, 43 more than us. And lastly, we have the Honda Accord 96, inspired by the Castrol Mugen Accord, of course. After tuning it, it only has 318 bhp, not quite enough to make it feel like a race car. Well, perhaps the AI is having a better experience than we are, as their version of the Accord has 340 brake horsepower, 22 more horses than we have. Here we are at the penultimate championship to have cheating opponents now, the tuned NA car number one cup. And we start with the Mazda MX-5 A-Spec. The AI only has a small power advantage over us here. They have 291 bhp, while we have 274, an increase of just 17 horsepower. Next up are the two potential spoon cars which feature as opponents in this event. First up is the Spoon Integra, which in our hands has 312 bhp. The AI once again has an advantage of course, with 388 brake horsepower this time, which equates to an unfair advantage of 76 horses of power. The second Spoon opponent is of course the Spoon Civic, which is typically a bit slower than the Integra. The maximum bhp that we can give the car is 250, whereas the AI opponent in this race has 347, almost 100 more. 97 more brake horsepower to be exact. There are two other cars to briefly mention in this race though, the Mugen Civic and the Mugen Integra. The Civic has 291 bhp and the Integra has 290. The maximum power output that we can apply to these cars with NA tuning is 266 for the Civic and 283 for the Integra. However, when turbocharged, the Civic has 339 bhp and the Integra has 358. But bear in mind that this is supposed to be an NA only championship, so turbo should be illegal. And that brings us on to the final championship to feature cheating AI, and it features some of the biggest cheats on the game. It's the Tune Turbo Number 1 Cup. We start with the least offensive hybrid cheat. First is the Mines Lancer Evolution 5. As an opponent in this race, it has 590 brake horsepower. Whereas we have to make do with just 518, giving the AI an advantage of 72 bhp. And bear in mind, that's nowhere near the worst cheat in this event. Moving on, we come now to the Mazda RX-7 A-Spec, which only appears on race 2 of this championship, which is held at test course. Our RX-7 A-Spec has 493 horsepower, which isn't bad, you might think. Well, I'd rather have what the AI has, which is an RX-7 A-Spec with 587 horsepower, meaning that it has 94 more horses than we do. Third on our list of hybrid cheaters is the TRD 2000 GT. 
Through tuning at Toyota G of the ship, we can give this car a maximum power output of 506 brake horsepower. What does the AI have? It has 628 horsepower, which equates to 122 more horses of power than we have to contend with. Fourth is the Toyota Altezza 280T, which in this race has 561 brake horsepower when driven by the AI. But of course, the maximum BHP that we can give this car through tuning is bound to be less. And it is, 150 brake horsepower less to be precise, as our Altezza can only have 411 BHP. Believe it or not, there are still two last hybrid cheaters that are worse than the Altezza. The first of these is the Nismo 270R. The one that we're driving here has a maximum of 432 horsepower, but the one that the AI opponents drive has 585 bhp, 153 more horsepower than we can possibly give to this car ourselves. Now we come to the last cheat in this championship, the last cheat in this video, and also one of the worst. It's the Tommy Kyra M30, which also happens to be the biggest cheat in this event. The maximum horsepower that we can give this car through tuning is 408 bhp. Not bad, I hear you say. Well, that's clearly not enough for the AI, as their M30 has 583 horsepower, 175 more than us in the same car. Unbelievable. Well guys, that brings us to the end of all the cheats that at least I'm aware of in Gran Turismo 2. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was eye-opening for you, and I'll see you next time.